life and um, storage state of the wine. My name is uh, Panagiotis Sarapitsis. Um, a few months ago, we were asked to analyze uh, those uh, uh, wines that were preserved uh, and stored in different ways. Uh, uh, five white wines, eight uh, red wines were part of the project. Of all of them, uh, there was uh, one uh, uh, control wine at four degrees for the whole duration of uh, the experiment. Then uh, one bottle that was preserved uh, at uh, 13 uh, degrees uh, for 10 days and another for 90 days. Then at uh, 13 degrees centigrade, uh, here again, uh, well, no, at 35 degrees centigrade, so we have uh, five days, 10 days, and 15 days. And at 45 degrees centigrade, uh, uh, we had uh, wines preserved for one day, five days, and 10 days. Normally, when colleagues uh, say that uh, experiments uh, are made uh, with the wines at very high temperatures, uh, I tend to be critical and think that you cannot boil the wine to carry out uh, your investigations. But then uh, when I uh, uh, use temperatures as high as uh, 45 degrees centigrade, well, I realize that this is similar to real life situations. Uh, when you ship wines uh, to Australia, uh, often time uh, you have to go through Malaysia and containers uh, are uh, um, uh, moved from one ship to another and uh, they're kept in those conditions uh, for up to five days or even more and uh, you can reach those very high temperatures or even higher than 40 degrees centigrade. So we did not test uh, uh, unreal cases, but real cases, or cases that can take place also in real life. We analyzed uh, all those types of wines with two different uh, analyses, uh, one in uh, liquid chrom chromatography and another uh, in gases chromatography. For the liquid one, we focused on those uh, metabolites that you can see, uh, tryptophan and um, alin for uh, uh, polyphenols and thiols, especially for these compounds that you can see here uh, that are uh, formed in wine uh, um, because uh, there is uh, a, a, a um, SO2 that is also formed. This is a tannin that reacts uh, uh, to SO2 for this carbon uh, leading to the formation of these compounds uh, uh, for the uh, gas chromatography. Uh, uh, it was carried out by some colleagues uh, in our lab and various uh, uh, terpenes, uh, uh, acids, esters uh, were analyzed. And then uh, we tried to see what happens, what are the, which are the metabolites uh, that change. Here you can see the uh, epicathokin SO3. Uh, well, we tried to study data and uh, we uh, used uh, at a 100% the control wine uh, and we tried to see what happened at different temperatures. Here on the top you can see what happened for uh, red wines. Every line indicates a little red wines. Uh, data for white wines uh, are uh, at the bottom of the slide. You can see the various uh, temperatures, 13, 35, uh, 45 for the two uh, compounds, epi, uh, uh, catechin, uh, SO3H uh, and the other one here you can see that there are some temperature markers in some cases we noticed that there was an increase up to 600 where six times uh, more for a, a, a wine that was preserved uh, at that very high temperature these are new markers uh, in enological terms uh, that were discovered a few years ago only but we knew that these markers uh, show what 
can actually be uh, telling uh, when uh, wine is stored at very high temperatures. We had uh, an experiment on Sangiovese. Here we can see the compounds uh, for wine stored uh, at uh, uh, um, domestic uh, temperatures. Then uh, there is an increase for the various wines, whereas uh, uh, in uh, the uh, cellar we can see that uh, there is a higher level of stability. We published another article and uh, there we uh, uh, demonstrated that if uh, tannins uh, are uh, very rich in uh, young uh, uh, wines, uh, the sulfur uh, products of tannins uh, increases uh, in terms of concentration uh, in uh, aged uh, wines. And if temperature increases, this reaction uh, is uh, enhanced. Uh, so concentration uh, is higher and uh, even more. Um, more rapid uh, than at lower temperatures. Now let's have a look at the markers uh, that we identified uh, through the gas chromatography. Here there are two very well-known compounds when it comes uh, uh, to the uh, influence uh, uh, they uh, uh, um, are subject to, vitispiran and uh, TDN. Normally they give uh, to certain uh, 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 nodes such as uh, kerosene and camphor. They're famous for Riesling, and uh, the more uh, increase in temperature uh, over time, uh, the uh, uh, more uh, uh, they get concentrated up to uh, uh, four to five times in some cases. These are not new compounds. Uh, they uh, have been investigated for a long time, and we know that uh, uh, when uh, temperature increases, what we know that there is a, a, a set of uh, chemical reactions and we know that younger wines are uh, uh, more fruity and they lose that fruity uh, uh, um, aroma over time uh, and some other nodes uh, such as kerosene uh, increase, uh, especially for Riesling wines, and those nodes are uh, uh, well uh, correlated uh, to TDN, which is a stable compound. It increases uh, uh, over aging. It can cover uh, the uh, fruity nodes. Uh, the uh, lower the pH in wine, uh, the higher can be its concentration, uh, and it is affected by temperature. We studied other compounds, especially for uh, white wines, for terpene, for free terpenes. Uh, we did not notice much differences, uh, 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 um, uh, but. Uh, for um, alpha uh, terpeniol, uh, which is another very well known uh, compound uh, that increases uh, 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 with uh, aging, uh, we saw that at higher temperatures uh, there was an increase in concentration for all white wines. This has not been the case uh, for red wines, not all the times. Uh, some esters, uh, and we want them in wines because uh, uh, they give a fruity note. Uh, we uh, studied the situation uh, at uh, 45 degrees and we noticed that the concentration of all those asters diminished uh, over time. Well, here you can see the timing. Um, for 45 degrees, uh, we carried out the text up to 10 days. Here we are at 5 days, 1, 5 and 10 days. Sampling was carried out uh, for those durations, uh, so the short periods of times and not long uh, periods uh, of uh, times. Uh, other esters are illustrated here, and uh, we notice the same trend. Uh, if the temperature increases, esters decrease. Uh, uh, um, well, here we have uh, the furfural, another marker that increases uh, uh, if uh, the wine is uh, stored at high temperatures. Uh, and for both uh, white and uh, red wines, its concentration increased uh, by up to eight times uh, for some red wines. This is a very important uh, marker for wines that are stored at very high temperatures. And I would like... Uh, 
uh, to thank uh, um, my uh, colleagues uh, who uh, worked uh, in the uh, gas uh, chromatography uh, uh, sector. And I would also like to thank Francesca, uh, uh, who's worked on those wines, and Janine. Thank you.